half million people have lost their jobs. So unemployment is rampant at this point. A lot of people have been furloughed, people have been laid off. And so the purpose of this presentation that I put together was to help those who are business owners to think differently during this time period. It's time to really uh, redirect yourself. Uh, it was something that um, Bishop T.D. Jakes used to say, he had a sermon called Reposition Yourself. And so during this season, it's time for all of us as business owners, as employees, and just different things, we have to reposition ourselves. So one of the things uh, for businesses and how to reposition yourself, because people aren't coming to your doors anymore, they're not coming through the doors, they're not knocking because of social distancing and quarantining, the most important thing for business owners to know is the importance of social media presence and how we need to you know, establish, if we haven't established our Facebook pages and our YouTube and LinkedIn and things like that, now is definitely the time to establish. And if you already have it, you have to grow your social media presence, your web presence. So that includes your websites, that includes your Facebook, your Instagram, your YouTube, your LinkedIn and whatever else they come out with. These are our major modes of communication at this point in time. And so uh, I'm getting lots of calls from people who need to get their websites updated or upgraded. You know, you have to be able to accept uh, your funds, you know, accept your monies electronically now, you know, um, because people aren't coming in and writing checks. A lot of people aren't dealing with cash. So if you have your websites, make sure that you have an e-commerce portion of your website so that people can click on PayPal or Square or what have you and be able to pay you because it's important to get paid during this uh, crisis as well. And also, and, and like I said, number two, increasing your virtual communications uh, via emails, phone, you know, with email, I, I use Constant Contact. There are a lot of email services out there that you can use to deal with your clientele. Uh, giving people phone calls. We're on Zoom right now, so Zoom is a very good way of meeting with your clients. And, and uh, Facebook video and video chat is very good and it's free. So that's, that's a, a, a virtually untapped resource as well. Uh, Skype, things like that. But the important thing to do during this time period is to communicate. Communicate with your clients, communicate with your vendors, communicate with your target audiences, communicate with your employees. It's important to communicate because if you're not saying anything, they may think that you're shut down. They may think that, you know, you went out of business or something. So it's important to communicate your status of where you stand, where you stand with your clients, where you stand with your customers, how you have uh, navigated uh, the crisis, how you are now uh, doing business. You know, uh, I noticed one of the first things that came out was Macy's had a uh, advertising campaign for instead of telling people to go to the stores, they were directing people to their websites. So they're like Macy's.com, you can shop, you can get discounts and things like that. So they had to shift what they were doing before. So if you have businesses where you were used to people coming in to your store, it's the time now to make sure that people know that they can still get your goods and services and all they have to do is send you an email and they can, they can cash app you or what have you, but you want to keep your income flowing at this time because now is the time to keep your income flowing because if you stop during this season, it's hard to reclaim that. You can't reclaim that time back. So it's, I can't stress the importance enough of just increasing your communications and letting people know what you're doing and how you're doing things. Also, as you look at number three, we talk about advertising on outlets that are currently experiencing high traffic because you know we are in a crisis and people aren't going outside. Uh, radio and billboard advertising may not be the most effective for your campaigns because a lot of times people, when they're listening to the radio, they're driving in their cars or they're at work or, you know, so their, their listenership is going down during this season because most people are at home. 
Most people are at home watching television. Uh, billboards won't be as popular because people can't go outside. And if you are if you are spending money on radio or billboards, I would I would uh, tell you to speak with your marketing uh, reps and let them know or ask for a discount because you're not you're not going to get the traffic that you got before because of this crisis. And if you're looking at how to market your business now, I would suggest you know uh, Facebook advertising, Instagram, network television is still good because a lot of people are watching the news. Uh, Google advertising and YouTube are uh, just, they're great deals. They were, they were a bargain before, but in this current climate, they are highly necessary and effective for getting your communications across. So as we go to this next slide, and I think I kind of talked on, I touched on this already, but offering virtual services and e-commerce payment solutions for your customers. Um, one of uh, the people that I deal with, one, one of the businesses that I deal with is Healthy Hair Solutions and how they had their websites and things already up to date and they have, they have reps that are in the community you know, that, that you can call, you know, like I can call my um, beautician and ask her for products now. And, you know, I can ask her for products and she'll, you know, they sent me a square invoice in the email and I was able to pay via square and they delivered it to my doorstep. So there are ways that you can get services during this time period. So when you look at your business, think about how you can serve people without face-to-face -face contact. And as you look at number six, and I spoke about this before, building and maintaining your client relationships. You know, uh, you can't communicate enough. Uh, train your staff, create, you know, this is also a time of downtime. You know, so this is a good time for planning, you know, strategic planning for your business. What do you plan to do once this crisis is over? Uh, this is a good time to do the research and create a plan. Also, if you need training, you know, if there is some training that you want to get, online this is a good time to do online training to perfect your skills as we wait for uh the uh economy to, to come back around as we wait for the cure to be found this, these are your times of strategic planning so you know so if you're just on the couch watching netflix and you know looking at movies day after day just know that this is a this is a very crucial time in our in our history it's a very crucial time and and it's good to be effective during that time period and not just uh, wait, because everybody's not waiting. Your competition is not waiting. They're planning and they're plotting and they're trying to figure out how to gain larger market share. So this is your opportunity to think about those things as well. Creating the pivot. I know you all have probably been hearing a lot of things about pivoting your businesses. Uh, and when I say pivot, pivot is really just about uh, altering the ways that you do business. You know, I mean, because there are some there are some things that you won't be able to sell during this season. I mean, there are beauty salons that can't do hair right now because it's, you know, it's basically against the law. You know, uh, nail techs, you know, there are things, there are businesses that are out there right now that can't be effective due to what's going on in this season. So as you look at your business, think about how you can slightly pivot the services and the products that you all you offer in order to continue to have cash flow into your business. Like I was saying, my hairstylist, she's starting to sell uh, beauty products you know, and deliver them to people's homes. That's a way that she has pivoted to, and you know, to keep her cash flowing into her, uh, into her home, into her business. Uh, I know people who have housekeeping services and housekeeping businesses where they're no longer able to go into a home, you know, because of the dangers that lie there. And they have pivoted and they're now offering uh, decontamination services you know, to the community, you know, to the uh, businesses, you know, that if someone has been in your home or somebody has been in your business that had COVID-19, you can now offer that service if you have a housekeeping service. You can offer decontamination services. 
Uh, you know, I'm in public relations. So one of the things that I have been offering more of has been crisis communications management, um, you know, public relations services. Uh, I had to pivot the way that I did press conferences. We're no longer doing press conferences on the inside. And now there's a limit to how many people can, we're down to 10 people, you know, so the best we can do is 10 people outside for a press conference. But I had to pivot and learn how to do that to offer that to my clients. So those are the things that you should be thinking about during this season is how you can pivot your services or how you can pivot your products to increase market share. Uh, I have a niece who sells, um, she, she had a hair care business, but what she did was she pivoted her uh, business to sell hand sanitizers, moisturizing hand sanitizers. So in that way, she was able to continue to have cash flow into her company. You know, it was something that you never thought of before of having hand sanitizers, but in this season and in this shortage and with this concern of the market of people wonder, you know, worrying about their hands drying out from using so much hand sanitizer, she was able to find a new market for her business and be able to uh, increase her uh, cash flow during that season. So that's something else that you can think about during this time period is how you can create the, the pivot for your business, how you can alter how you're doing things. So this is my contact information. If you, you know, if you or somebody you know needs marketing services or public relations, a website or social media management, I am here for you. And at this time, I'd like to take any questions that anybody may have. Let's see, I guess if you have questions, you can unmute your phone and speak directly into the computer or into your phone if you have a question. Mm -hmm. You can unmute um, or use the chat. Um, I guess a question that I, I'm interested in hearing more about is, um, I know you gave the example that your niece like started making hand sanitizer. Um, are there any other ways that you um, have seen people pivot or maybe even opening it up to everyone on the call? Are there ways that you have pivoted um, that you can share with the group or that you've seen other people share? I think sometimes um just being in a space like this amongst other people who are business oriented and entrepreneurs it can be beneficial to hear from each other um so i would just open the floor for for people to share ideas or, or ask questions i would say a way that my client which is the urban league has had to pivot because the urban league has 15 locations and community outreach centers that were open that we had to close. We had to close a lot of buildings due to the safety issues. And so one of the ways that we have pivoted is that we are now offering uh, free food and toiletry giveaways every, every weekend to uh, meet the need of the community without putting our staff in danger. So that's, you know, that's one of the ways that we have had to pivot is just by, you know, just offering uh, community services in that way as opposed to having people in a building and worrying about the safety and health of the clients as well as the employees. This is Tracy Jeffries. Uh, we also pivoted with my company uh, where we work with a lot of government entities on uh, providing planning sources and management. We pivoted to actually providing cleaning services. So, um, I didn't really necessarily have a large budget to properly clean their facility. So when doors open, the public can come to their institution. So we pivoted that way and it's been pretty good. So does anyone have any businesses that are, that are maybe in 
may, maybe someone who has a business who don't know how to pivot? Do you have a question of maybe how you would like to change your business in order to continue in, in order to continue or increase your, your cash flow? Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to turn it over to Thorwar Alidra Allen. Sorry, I was talking and I was on mute. <laughs> okay, let me put my video back on. Well, first, I would like to thank um, Angelia for sharing this information with us. I do think that um, I know for me as a business owner, I definitely, it generated some ideas for me. Um, and I, I wrote down several things that um, honestly might seem... A, to some people commonsensical, but I think with just everything that's going on and how fast we're moving, even in at home, you know, because things are changing so much and we're worried about so much, sometimes you don't even think through like, um, you know, honestly, I haven't sent an email. Like I haven't sent an email to my email list saying, hey, we're still open. Yes, I've been posting and people have placed orders, but you're right. Some people might have assumed, oh, I can't place an order right now. So just like making sure that you do something like that, um, I think is very important. So I, all of those points were, um, they really resonated with me and I'm appreciative of that. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning for people who maybe were here, let me share my screen. Okay, can everybody see this slide okay? Yeah. All right, so um, we do have another session coming up. We are being very intentional to continue to provide resources and spaces uh, for business owners to gather resources, to learn, to, to help um, with staying successful, staying open um despite this pandemic so our next session is going to be on tuesday april 28th at six and of course it is virtual and that will be led by tracy jeffrey she's actually on the call um now and um she'll be talking about crisis management um for both now and after COVID 19 because that's the thing like a lot of people are talking about going back to normal but the reality is the impacts of all of this will likely be felt ongoingly um a lot of things will change maybe even forever um because of this this situation so we want to be prepared for how to move forward in whatever this new normal um you know may be so please mark your calendars for that there is a facebook event um for it uh, that you can rsvp on but the zoom information is all there and then you can see there is a link for um the survey so if you could type that link um on your onto your browser and your phone it literally is like a two minute survey i had done so much work with the qr code and now i can't get it to work so i apologize <laughs> um but uh type that in it's going to take just a couple minutes and it will really help us to know how to move forward with our sessions and make sure that we're doing things that are beneficial and um, and really helpful and what you all need. So feel free to give us that honest feedback on what you want to see, what um, how we should adjust in the future. We want all of that information. And we do challenge each of you to invite someone. So um, take that, take this flyer. Like I said, it's on Facebook. Share it. Tell someone, you know, I'm sure that you all, we all know other 
business owners, you know, that could benefit from this session. So please be sure to, to share this so that we can have even more people in attendance. Any questions that may have come up since then? Hi, Sora Alicia. It's Brianna. I have a question. Um, yeah. um, in regards to the slides, we talked about advertising on outlets that are currently experiencing high traffic. And I had a question on um, when advertising on those outlets, do you have any recommendations for apps to where you can um, schedule posts to advertise on multiple networks at once? Um, I've um, experience that with the apps that I've been using, um, I'm having to um, schedule my post on different apps for um, different social media platforms, and it's kind of becoming a little confusing to keep up with. So I'm kind of looking for um, any guidance on recommendations to where I can um, get all of that in one app. I would say that Ho Hootsuite is a very good app for uh scheduling posts and things like that and it goes across pl platforms and you can also uh look at constant contact they have a they they have a, a a platform as well where you can you can post and schedule things thank you so much there you are who sweets i agree like that that is the main one that i know about um, I think they have a free version, just to be clear, like, I think they have mm -hmm. a free version, but then like, you know, one that costs. Um, so I think that's just something you have to decide if that, um, if it's worth maybe doing the larger packet or, you know, if you can fit that into your budget. But to sort of um, Angelia's point earlier, I think um, this is an opportunity where sometimes people are having like those free trials or you may be able to contact them and say like, hey, you know, I really want to try this, you know, but with everything going on, I can't necessarily afford it right now. Like people are being much more open, you know, to making accommodations to where maybe they wouldn't have done that in the, in the past. So it never hurts to ask, you know, the worst thing to tell you is no, um, but I think you'd be surprised at just what people are offering for free. Like a lot of people are offering their extended versions of things for like free right now because of the change. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I also have another question. Mm -hmm. um, now with um, updating an e-commerce website and linking um, a POS system to like the back portion of your website, do you ladies have any recommendations on um, apps um, that will integrate a Clover POS system to um, WordPress? I would have to research that on, on WordPress. I'm I'm currently using Weebly, so it was it was pretty easy because they have a uh, connection with Square. But uh, as far as WordPress, I would really have to check because. Our like the Urban League used to have a WordPress site, and we actually used Authorize.net to connect directly to the bank, and then that way you don't have to worry about fees. Okay, thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. I don't um, and I don't know about WordPress and Clover, and if there is a link. I mean. I'm sure you could Google it, um, but you may want to, con I, you know, to Sora Angelia's point about pivoting and how sometimes this is a time where we start doing things differently. Like this may be a time where you consider utilizing a website that does have a set POS already. Um, you know, again, if it's, affordable and, and something realistic for you to do in this amount of time. Um, but for my business, I use Shopify and I specifically went with Shopify. I was going to use Squarespace at first, but I specifically went with Shopify because um, of the POS setup. And I knew that like it had its own cart reader. So like, 
everything is linked. If I go and sell something at a pop-up, it's still connected to my online store. So the inventory accounts still go together. The money is all going into the same bank account. Like everything is together compared to like having a certain type of online store, but then using a square when you're in person and having like money coming all over the place. Um, so I, I personally would recommend Shopify because I feel like it's super seamless. Um, and again, like I said, it, it has the POS, it has the website, it has the card reader. And so everything is set. But um, I think it's $29 a month to have the store. So that's just something um, to think about too. Toy um, said, I'm looking at the comments. She said that she uses Shopify due to its efficiency as well. And she said that WordPress, WordPress does have a plug in for Clover though. So go to WordPress, WordPress and search for the plugin um, and you should be able to log in and add a buy button. So that's good. So it sounds like you might be able to do it with the site that you have. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for another question. My last question. Um, so, Angelia, you mentioned earlier, um, I believe your niece, um, her company that she's um, um, adjusting her platform um, to assist with the COVID-19 epidemic with um, selling masks and germics and things of that nature. Do you have any recommendations on wholesalers or drop shippers um, or vendors um, that are um, have a surplus of those items? You know, I wish she was on this call because <laughs> I don't, she lives in Minnesota. And so I, I would really have to ask her about that. But yeah, no, I'm not sure how she does that. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I, anyway. I can probably give you her information though. That would be wonderful. Um, I got an email from Ethics Merch. It's E T H I X merch. And they are doing um, hand sanitizer. It says hand sanitizer in stock with quick turnaround. And it's like a small little bottle. You know, it's like those kind of customizable, like sample sizes. Um, and, and I think it says you have to order 250. Um, that's the minimum. But I do think that it's at a wholesale rate. And it looks like they have masks too, mm -hmm. based on this email. I can forward it to you if that's helpful. Yes, Laura Leisure, that would be wonderful. Um, is the platform that that company is selling on through like DHgate, Alibaba, or like their own, um, their own entity? Mm -hmm. It's their own entity. So it's ethicsventures.com, E-T-H-I-X ventures.com. Um, and the reason why they're called ethics and why I um, have bought through them sometimes is because they're focused on like sweatshop free products um, and like environmentally union, unionized labor and stuff like that. Um, so that it's like their own place and it's in the u.s thank you so much mm -hmm. sorry i'm talking with mute again i see another <laughs> question um for those of you who own your own business can you provide the name and website links etc to your business so that we can promote you on social media Yes. So we are, um, Gamma Omega is working on a Black Dollar 365 Spotlight um, initiative, if you will. So basically, we'll just be highlighting Black businesses. Send us a picture of a product or service that you offer, your name, a little brief description for the caption, and we will be sending it out on all of our social media as a way to ensure that people, again, like Sora Angelia said, know that you're open, know how they can still get your products. You have pickup, delivery, 
chip? What, you know, what are the options um, and know how to do that? So if you want to just drop that information in the chat, I will make sure that we record all of that um, so that we can send you, um, put your email address to, um, and I can send you an email with how to submit that uh, picture. Yep. And so Kim said that she would like to visit everyone's businesses and all that. So yes, drop them. That's a great way for us to network while we're all here. Also, if you um, are here, um, just type your first and last name in the chat so that we can have you for attendance too. Any other questions? Okay, well, um, please do the survey. So again, that link is, is right there. So go ahead and type that link into your computer, your phone, whatever. Um, and please just go ahead and, and um, take it now. We'll, we really appreciate the feedback. It, I promise you it takes no longer than two minutes. And then also make sure that you have the information for our upcoming session on Tuesday. Make sure you send it to somebody, you tell someone. Um, I will say when you complete the survey, that information is gonna pop up on your phone again. So that's a great way for you to screenshot it or you know write it down or send it, text it to someone, all of those things. Thank you again to Angelia. We're all giving you a round of applause. Uh, we very much appreciate it. And thank you all for attending. We'll see you all on Tuesday. Good weekend. Thank you. Ladies, have a good one.